Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's vlog. Um, I had a question from one of my lovely members in my stockpiling group as to how we as Australians stockpile. Now we all stockpile in different ways, how we build our stockpile is different, what we have in our stockpile is different to anyone else. A stockpile is, is unique to what you and your family use on a daily, weekly basis. Um, once again, I'd just like to add that stockpiling is not panic buying. Prepping is not panic buying. A stockpile, a prepper pantry takes months, even years to build up. Um, now the way I do it and why I do it is I first started stockpiling when my now retired husband was working in the construction industry. And I'm talking like 15, 20 years ago. Uh, he was self-employed for some at some times during that time. And obviously when you're self-employed, when you don't have work coming in, there's no money coming in. Um, and there's no worse feeling as a wife and mother that you can't feed your family. So that's why I started stockpiling. Now I usually set a $20 a fortnight stockpiling budget and when things that we use are on half price special, for example the rice and the noodles, the pasta and sauce there um, and the paper towel, the kitchen spray when it's on half price special, um, I either buy as many as I can with that $20 or I split it up. Now this shop was a bit different because I didn't need to do a lot of shopping normal grocery shopping this fortnight so this one was just a bit different so I just grabbed a few things of each that we use um, as a family. Um, now I also, these ones are chicken noodle, the flavoured soup mixes, these are like 45 cents from Coles. I also get the French onion ones and with the French onion ones if you're doing a slow cooker meal and you're using, say, some um, stewing steak or chuck steak or whatever you use, um, I just throw in a packet of the French onion soup mix, a little bit of water, and it just adds a lot of flavour. The chicken noodle ones you can actually add to mince. Brown some mince off, add whatever veggies you want, add a packet of that, a little bit of water, and just let it simmer, and that's just a cheap, easy meal idea. So you can either set aside... A budget of for example $20 a fortnight now I shop fortnightly if you shop weekly make it $10 a week even $5 a week if that's all you can afford that will get you you know a couple of tins of soup every week or a couple of packets of these rices you know um, $10 would probably get you a pack of toilet paper so you, you can either set a budget and have that money separate to your normal grocery shopping budget. Now I use budget envelopes that I make out of cardboard, out of um, sorry cardstock, and I will try and find some in a, find one in a minute and show you. So then I get the cash out of the bank and then I divide it up. Say two hundred a fortnight for normal grocery shopping, fifty dollars a fortnight for fresh produce, $20 a fortnight uh, for my stockpile, etc, etc. Um, I will find my money envelopes in a minute and show you. Um, and that's how I do it. Now, you can choose to do it that way. Um, it may work for you, it may not. You have to find a way that works for you. And can I please stress... Please don't use a credit card to start your stockpile. Don't go into debt to start a stockpile. If you use a credit card to say buy two bottles of these, these are two fifty each at Coles. By the time you've paid that five dollars off for the two, it's probably cost you ten twenty dollars in interest. So please don't go into debt. Please don't use your credit card to start a stockpile. That's just not a wise idea. It's going to end up costing you a lot more than what you paid for the product in the long run. 
Um, that's just my advice to you. I am not a financial expert by any means, but if you can, you use cash. Um, you know, if you've got ten dollars, you can get a tray of these pot noodles from Coles. They're like seventy-five cents each. They are great. Now, I don't necessarily use these as pot noodles. I make up the noodles with the beef stock sachet that's in there. And then I um, brown off some um, thinly, very thinly sliced steak, add some veggies, add the noodles, add the broth, and you've got a soup. You've got like a beef soup with noodles. Um, you can add a bit of chilli, make it a bit spicy if you want, you know. There's just so many things you can do with that. But the, as I said, the way I stock poly is I set aside... $20 a fortnight, if the shampoo and conditioner we use as a family is on special that fortnight, I will get three shampoo, three conditioner, or whatever it is for that $20. And you'll quickly realise that your stockpile will grow. Another way you can do it is say, right, one month you're going to concentrate on pantry items. The next month you're going to do toiletries. The next month you're going to do cleaning items. The next month you're going to do, say, non-food items like batteries, candles, um, stuff like that, you know, torches, matches, whatever. One month you can do um, medical, band-aids, you know, antiseptic cream, Dettol, stuff like that. So that's another way you can do it. And then you concentrate that month on doing, you know, first month you say, right, I'm going to do pantry and... I'm going to get this, this, and this. And another good idea too is to write out a list of what your family uses every single week or every single day. As I said, each stockpile is unique to your family situation. But having a list and then you can think, right, um, you know, we use sun silk shampoo or we use handy paper towel. I mean, you don't necessarily have to get the brands. Um, buying generic can save you a lot of money. But sometimes, you know, the name brand stuff is on half price, especially that sometimes cheaper than the generic products. And another good idea to do is to write out a list of meals that your family likes to eat on a regular basis. Um, and I mean, we're not fancy meal eaters by any means. But keep a list of your family favourite meals and make sure you've got those ingredients in your pantry to make those meals. Um, as Kath Armstrong from the Cheapskates Club says, you know, ingredients, you can make things a lot more easier if you've got the ingredients for the meals that you like or the desserts that you like. You know, cake mixes, you can pick up a cake mix from, you know, for 75 cents. But then you've got to make sure you've got the eggs, the milk, the butter, or whatever it is you need to make that cake mix. So that's another idea, is just to make a list of everything that your family eats over a week, you know, breakfast, lunches, dinners, snacks, desserts, etc. And you, you know, have the ingredients on hand to make those meals. You can have these packet pastas on sauces, you know, if you've got your kids play sport and you're coming in at 6 o'clock at night, they're starving, you cook up some sausages, make up a packet or two of the pasta and sauce, you've got a meal in probably 20 minutes. Um, so, you know, hopefully these tips will help you work out the best way to stockpile for your family. Um, I am trying to be a bit more prepared and having, you know, a fully stocked pantry. But, yes, yeah, if you can, set aside a budget, whatever you can afford, five, ten, twenty dollars a week, a fortnight, a month or whatever, and go from there. But yeah, lists, make lots and lots of lists of everything you eat, that you use, you know, your toiletries, um, your medical, make a list of any prescription medications that, you know, your family needs on a permanent basis or, you know, whatever the case may be. So hopefully that explains it all a bit more. If anyone's got any comments or other tips 
and ideas that can, you know, a different way that you might stockpile, please list them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up because it all helps my YouTube algorithm. Um, I will do another video a bit later on the money envelopes I use. I'll show you those. I actually make them myself and sell them. Um, it's $15 for four money envelopes made out of quality cardstock. And that includes postage anywhere in Australia. So let me know if you're interested in that. But thanks for watching. I hope this um, answers your question. Um, and don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.